if you don't go with me, if you go with someone else, just be aware, try to vet them. There's so many title companies out there now that if you don't have the right team handling that file, one little moving piece can cause a huge blockage and, and may just derail an entire transaction. But it's always useful to have a title agency that has an attorney on staff or a title agency run by an attorney. You get everything in-house. It protects the consumer in multiple aspects, you know, previous utilities that are unpaid for or untaken care of from the sellers. And then you have owners that come in and are getting like a $500. I had a client a couple of months ago that it was a mother and son that owned the property mm -hmm. uh, here in Florida. Son passed away. Oh, now the property, what's going to happen? Probate. I were looking to sell this property. You know, you buy a property, you, you find yourself expired permits, you know, open permits, lien violation, things like that, like this client. And it's a gamble. So something that, that I pride myself on is giving access. But giving that access sets a lot of people at ease, sets a lot of agents at ease. It, it makes you sleep better and you know, knowing that, that there's someone thinking about the deal the same way that you're thinking about the deal. So today I have a very special guest. I'm talking with my real estate attorney, Kevin. Kevin, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Of course, I uh, want to introduce you to everybody. Um, we do a lot of deals together and I really wanted to have you on to give our audience just a little bit more insight on what a real estate attorney does and maybe some questions that they should think of when they're looking to hire a real estate attorney. So Kevin, just to kick it off, could you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Yeah, of course. So again, my name is Kevin Faria. I've been practicing uh, law here in Miami now for two years, but I've been doing title work now for over ooh, seven years now. So before I started my own firm, I was at Greenspoon Martyr with my former boss and mentor who basically taught me the ropes of doing this. And just to give you a little story of how I got into this, I initially wanted to do litigation and I mm -hmm. didn't want to do real estate. And then he really pushed me to do real estate and being here in Miami, it's, it's such a, like a good business because it's connected to everything, you know, like real estate touches everything. So under him, um, started working, doing residential uh, title work, residential real estate, uh, then got more into the commercial before leaving, uh, right before COVID started. And just the years that I spent there, learned kind of the ins and outs, got an opportunity to do, you know, extensive title work with commercial deals, you know, delivering buildings, um, got to do extensive work with residential closing. So that basically allowed me, you know, after COVID to just come in and, and create my own title agency, my own law firm. And right now I specialize in real estate law and specifically we do, you know, residential closings and, and commercial closings as well. But yeah, so that's, that's kind of like in a, in a brief snippet, how, how it happened, how I ended up here. Nice. Huh? That's uh, yeah, it's a journey. And I've been with your journey, you know, at your old company yeah. and now yeah, uh, since we first started. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 So you've seen it. It's, it's been, it's been a journey. Let me just say, but it's really, I think like the reason that I've, I've, I've excelled in this because you know that there's so many title companies here and there's a ton of attorneys as well that do title, but I think something that sets has always set me apart is just the work ethic that I, I carried over from when I first learned this, you know, it's, it's something taking pride in your work and, and just putting out the most perfect product you could. And that's something that I really do with every deal is I just, I try to do my absolute best, like, you know, and, and because your reputation. That, that's something lesson that, that I learned and it's your reputation. I think that's something that has set my office apart is is building that reputation. So I've taken a lot of pride in, and you've been with, with it at the beginning and your team, you know, starting off and, and building that reputation. So, so yeah, two years running, going on, going on three actually. Yeah. Yeah. But it feels like 10, doesn't it? It does. It does. <laughs> yeah, it does. The hours don't get any easier. That's, that's one thing that in this business, you're connected 24 seven. So even on weekends. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No. And I appreciate you for, uh, for being there. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit more? Cause you mentioned title company and, uh, for those people watching, you know, in Florida, when you buy a property, you can close with, you know, a title office and you can just go and, you know, have a, a title closer kind of close you out, or, you know, you could, you know, work with an attorney like Kevin yeah. be represented, uh, Kevin, talk to us a little bit about those two differences and, and the two experiences. As a buyer here in Florida, basically it depends. If you're a cash buyer, you're pretty much, you don't have to actually get title insurance if you're doing cash buying in Florida. Not a lot of people know this, but in, and I explain this to my clients who are cash buyers, but I always explain to them, would you buy a BMW, drive it off the lot without insurance? It's the same right. thing. Would you buy a million dollar home, you know, start living in it without having any kind of coverage? And in reality, title insurance is not that expensive. You know, like 
a, a policy. It, it's all calculated on a, on a rate that's statutory, like it's based, right. calculated. Like you, you don't, you can't make it up. It's not, it's a preset rate. So I always tell my clients, you know, for cash buyers, even if you don't have the, you don't have to get an owner's policy, still get it and do it. So as a cash buyer, you can go with a title company where you just have pure title. Now there's title agencies out there where you go through a certification process through different underwriters. Um, there's First American, there's Old Republic, who's actually run by attorneys. Um, there's West Core, there's a few other ones, but those are the, the big ones. And mm -hmm. these title agencies basically go through a certification process here in Florida where they get licensed to do title by the state of Florida, but they're not necessarily attorneys. So mm. there's a ton of those out there and a lot of those may have attorneys on staff or consult with attorneys. Um, nowadays I found that, but, but a lot of those are just pure title. Nothing bad, it's the only thing when I say to that is like, it's always good to have an attorney on staff because especially a real estate attorney, you never know what could go wrong in a transaction. Like you and I have had a couple of transactions where things have gone, you know, possibly south and a title agent may not necessarily know the ins and outs of, of the legalities of things and be able to step in there. So I think having like business where you have title and attorney, it's really helpful to the consumer because it's not, you don't have to then get a piecemeal. But yeah, so if you're a cash, if you're a cash buyer, you can go in and if you don't want to get title, I mean, good luck, <laughs> you don't have to. But if you do, you have the option of going with, with just a, a title agency that's licensed to do title or you can go with an attorney that also happens to be authorized to issue title. I can go on about, you know, the differences between the two or the benefits and costs. I mean, I don't know how, how, how in depth you want me to get about that. <laughs> yeah, no, well, I think the thing with attorneys is like, they're almost like seatbelts. Like you, you don't know when you're going to need it. Having you to represent my clients, uh, when, when things do come up, when, um, certain, I guess, contract elements need to be reinforced. Like I know that you're going to go to bat for the client. Um, whereas, you know, in other deals where I had buyers who just closed with title, you know, it, it, it got a little tricky. And then, you know, I would have to, you know, involve my broker or have the yeah. broker call. Whereas, you know, I, I can really lean on you to, to enforce the contract and really enforce the buyer and the, and the client's rights, you know? Yeah. I think it's useful. I mean, I, I only learn doing title work through a law firm. Mm -hmm. My mentor and the person who taught me this, Manny, Manny Crespo, he's, he's still at Greenberg and he, like, that's how I learned it, doing it in a law firm setting. So it was actually new to me now being exposed to these little title agencies and working more with them. We worked with them at the firm, but it was still the level of clientele where we usually, it was attorney to attorney that we were issuing title. Mm -hmm. And so now is where I've gotten to, you know, deal with more of these title companies. Um, I will say something too here in Florida, you know, we're a hot state right now for real estate. So with that also comes a lot of people doing not just real estate agents, but as it comes up with a lot of people doing title work. I always mm -hmm. tell my clients, you know, like if you don't go with me, if you go with someone else, just be aware, try to vet them. There's so many title companies out there now with how busy the market is, they're popping up. All you have to do is do it a certification course, you know, of like 60 hours online and pass a test. So, but in reality, when you start doing it, there's so many intricacies and, and it's not that it's rocket science, but you know how it is that there's so many moving pieces that if you don't have the right team handling that file, one little moving piece can cause a huge like blockage and, and may just derail an entire transaction. I always say to people that, and, and again, it's not knocking title agencies only, but it's always useful to have a title agency that has an attorney on staff or a title agency run by an attorney just because again, it's more, it's better protection for a consumer. Um, you get everything in house. Uh, it protects the consumer in, in multiple aspects, you know, where the attorney can step in and actually represent the buyer, not just in title, but legally, you know, and we've, we've had cases like that where, where we are just pure title. We're acting as closing and title agent, but we always offer our clients, you know, if something comes about, we also offer legal representation and transaction. And I think maybe a couple of your clients have actually taken us up on that. Yep. And it's, it's been useful, you know, you don't have to go out searching for another, another part of your transaction. Yeah. And then, you know, filling in that, that other third party and then, you know, just, yeah. it, it's like you said, everything is in house with your uh, company, which I really love. And, you know, I love that the experience is like one stop shop, you know, at the end yeah. of the day, it's like, we just come to you for all legal and title work. We try to make um, it as seamless as possible. We try to make it as easy as possible. Um, yeah. One of my goals with the company, especially after COVID, was making this as easy, as seamless, as uncomplicated. I think a lot of people had a perception that we know when you close home, you sit there 
and you're sitting there with, an, with your attorney or, or with a closing agent with another party there in the other room, like this kind of classical way of closing homes. So yeah. that's something that when I went in, I really wanted to upend that and I really wanted to like change it up. And I capitalized on the fact that, 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 you know, everything was remote because of COVID and really just try to make it streamlined, seamless. And, and something that you've seen too, is like, we try to really like use technology in, in, in our, in our closings and in our, in, in everything that we do from closings, doing closings virtually anywhere in the world yeah. to, you know, like doing even mobile notaries, things like that, where the client doesn't even come to the office. We make it seamless. How many times have we had clients that I tell them, listen, just tell me where and when, whenever that's most convenient to you, you know? And I think that like, that's refreshing. And I found that that's been another thing that's set us apart and that's, you know, making it streamlined, you know, not what you said, not just having everything in house, but but also offering this product that just makes it easy, you know, makes it seamless to buy a property, makes it easy to buy a home. Yeah, no, yeah. The, that Apple Store experience, like That's mixed what I, with yeah. the Uber. You know what I'm talking about, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, and like, <laughs> we, like sending, I know my last buyers, you know, we did the mobile notary yeah. and it was like so smooth and nobody yeah. had to go to a law office or a yeah. title and drive and take off work. And yeah. they were able to close on their house. And that's like a whole new experience that, yeah. yeah, a lot of people aren't accustomed to, which I think is exactly. amazing. Exactly. Yeah. The Apple experience. That's what I call it. That's what I, I, I literally have molded in a way, even like now designing like marketing and stuff. Yeah. I'm like seamless, sleek to the point, seamless, sleek to the point. But yeah, the Apple experience, everything's easy ecosystem, you know, like, right. like what does that company do? Ecosystem, consumer, like the consumer doesn't have to do anything. It just makes it easy for them. But that's yeah. that's that's kind of like what we're copying that model a little bit, applying it to title because title is just very antiquated, as you know. <laughs> yeah, old school. Like you, you can either have that old school experience, which like not knocking anybody, but like no, no, no. Yeah, that yeah, is yeah. totally there for you. Or you know, you can move into like this modern new space, you know, where yeah. which is like really fun to play in. So, yeah. uh, speaking of that, you know, could you give us some examples of just some legal issues? Because you talked about how you represent some buyers and you know seller clients. Uh, what are some common legal issues that your clients face when they purchase a home or maybe after they buy a home? I wouldn't say it's legal, but I think one of the most common and, and it's something minimal, but it, it's still an issue um, buyers have is with utilities, something oh. where previous utilities that are unpaid for or untaken care of from the sellers. And then you have owners that come in and are getting like a five hundred dollar bill. You know, I had a client call me today about that. That's pretty commonplace. So there's a few things that as title agents, we try to do to prevent that. Not just obviously having like we pull lien reports, which go to the local municipality, county, whatever, you know, and they right. tell us basically if the account is on zero. But but even then, most people don't realize that, you know, you have to get you have to make sure that the seller has a closed paid out bill at the moment of closing and you get proof of that. And also you hold escrow for the seller for those utilities. And typically what I tend to do is I hold two months worth of utilities escrow. So oh. that's something common. Um, it's not legal because utilities typically are not leanable. When utilities, when I talk about water and sewage, these are not leanable unpaid due uh, fines. So they, but they remain with the property, you know, they remain with, with that account. So that's a pretty common thing for buyers. I think always to be aware of is having these unpaid utilities from either sellers or if you buy a property that let's say has tenants that have, that are moving out, that's something super important. I always I always try to you know explain to my buyers, you know, be, be aware of that. And, and on my end, when we close transactions like that, we always try to account for that. So that's been the most common headache for for buyers. And you know, you you don't want as a buyer to get a bill the next month saying that you owe a thousand dollars in water from your prior owner of your property. So that's one. Um, I think also other properties, you know, just buying properties with tenants, that's that's mm -hmm. here in Florida, that's a big, very common. And we've had clients where they buy property with tenants. So just making sure that not just getting the proper documentation, you know, from the closing, as you know, there's tenant estoppels, but there's also other protections that you want to make sure you have in place because you're now stepping foot, not just as an owner, but you're, now you're going to be a landlord. So um, I think just off the top of my head, those are two very common things here in Florida and in South Florida specifically, I think that come about for, for clients. Um, legality wise, I would say I fortunately have not encountered many title issues where we've had to step in. I can tell you from mistakes that let's say I, I, I have made even in the past or have come across not having a proper vesting in a deed, you know, oh, yeah. in, in the sense, like for example, if you and your, 
your partner are buying, you know, maybe you're not legally married, but you want to have the property vested in a way where if he passes, the interest goes to you, joint tenants with rights of survivorship, or perhaps you want to have it vested in a different way. Um, not a lot of people know that you have to ask that for your vesting. And a lot of a lot of people don't know either that if you don't say something to the person preparing the documents, there's default vesting, so which is tenants in common. What does yep. that mean? That the interest doesn't pass automatically, that now, now you have to go to probate for the person if they pass or is incapacitated. So I think something useful that buyers can always keep in mind is vesting. And that's something that, I, that I've seen across the board has not been really touched upon. I always have to ask my buyers, I'm like, how do you want the property to vest? And then they tell me, they're like, what? Like, I'm like, so you kind of explain and then you tell him, like, tell them if, if you don't do it properly, this is your default vesting. These are the possible consequences. So I think, I think that's, that's a big one. And that, that's actually very helpful because down the road, you know, here you've heard of the term, the ladybird deed and all those, the deedings and mm -hmm. estate planning. We call it, we call it Cuban estate planning. I don't, <laughs> don't, don't put that on camera, but, but we call it Cuban estate planning because that's yeah. what they do here in South Florida where you know you come across later and you have to do all these quick claim deeds and things all of those things can be prevented you just vest the property properly you know like have you have yourself uh, like advised properly and, yeah. and that can prevent a lot of issues you know in the future so other than that off the top of my head i'm trying to think yeah vesting has a lot to do with that because that also affects homestead rights and things like right. that but yeah i I'm, i can't really think of anything else is there anything that you like have come across that you would want to ask or or, or curious about? Yeah, no, it's funny that you brought that up. Like how, how is my buyer going to take property, right? And um, that, that's on the real estate exam, right? Tenants in common, you know, joint tenancy, but it, it's so overlooked and it's like such a big deal because people don't realize like to go through probate, like that's a process and that it's costs expensive. money. Yeah. Expensive. Yeah, I'll give you a benefit, an example of a, of a benefit of investing properly. I had a client a couple of months ago that it was a mother and son that owned the property uh, mm -hmm. here in Florida. Son passed away. So I get a, I, well, son was actually in, in the hospital, life support, you know, barely able to like, barely conscious. Yeah. And then um, the, I get a call, this client is, is panicking because, oh, now the property, what's gonna happen, probate, I, we're looking to sell this property. So we're, we're jumping through hoops, doing all these things. As soon as I pulled the record and, and saw the deed, I saw that they were joint tenants with mm -hmm. rights of survivorship. So right there, just off the bat right there, that saved everything because I told her, listen, this property automatically by operation of law is gonna go to you if, if something were to happen to him. And at, unfortunately he did pass away, but you know, it prevented, his mother was able to take the property, title to her, and right. close on the property and she was able to sell. Something that took one month that maybe would have taken six months because you have to get a court order, you have to go to probate, you have to yep. do all that process. So um, it's really beneficial, and that's that's what I'm saying. Something little like that can can save a lot of headaches, you know, in the future. Yeah. Um, one thing that I thought about too that that you know it's very common here in Florida and and in Miami are buying properties with expired or code violate not code violations but expired permits, permits ah, that are expired okay. or open permits. This has happened where it is a pain to close these permits out after the yeah. fact. I've had a client of mine who has come and become a client of mine that they bought an apartment and had a permit from 1996 or something and it was in Miami Beach where even after a certain time period it should be it should be let go they should, right. those should be closed out normally. There was something we got we got an inspector a code inspector that just was making our life difficult and was not being reasonable and basically wanted us to tear down the kitchen to see if the beams were installed properly, which makes no sense. You know, like there, there's proper way, I've been doing this long enough to know how to close out one of those permits, but we got it one difficult. And unfortunately he's the one holding the keys to closing the permit out. And unbeknownst to my client, he had bought that and the closing agent um, had closed with that expired permit. So we tried to seek, <laughs> uh, you know, compensation even after that, but it was it was just hard you know so my client had to spend thousands of dollars paying me thousands of dollars trying to resolve it and i at the end of the day it like i don't even think that it actually was properly resolved because they really wanted to tear it down so wow. he just opted to leave it <laughs> leave it as is like continue having it it wasn't an issue but but that's a problem you know now when he goes to sell the property it's going to be on there and you're going to have to deal with it again so i think expired permits uh 
permits like that, like open permits like that, very common here, just always things to be aware, utilities, little things. These things should normally be taken care of. And I think um, for buyers, it's always important to know what to ask for. And you should always ask for a copy of your lien report. A lien report, oh, okay. every closing agent that does title should get a lien report. The lien report will cover property taxes, will cover permitting, code compliance, and utilities. And you should get a copy of that report and you should review it. I don't know if you see on the emails that I share regularly, I share title work with clients. And I've had colleagues of mine tell me, why do you do that? You know, you, they don't understand what they're reading. I'm like, no, they do. Like, trust me. Like, I tell them, I'm like, and I always like put in my emails, let's have a talk about it. Let's have a question. If you have any questions, let's jump on the phone. But I share not just lien reports, I share everything, whatever comes in with title. And I let them know, hey, there's this issue that's on the seller side that they're resolving, but I let them know. So right. I think buyers should always try to ask for those copies. I even send those at closing. I don't know if you see my emails at closing. I send copies of all the title work that yep. we do just so it's in there. Not just for their benefit, but it's also, you know, to, to protect myself because, you know, if something comes about, you know, see my email. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. But also, like, I think it's really important. Again, this goes back to why I work with you is because, like, legally under my license, like, as a realtor, I can't give my opinion of title. So, like, yeah. when my buyer comes to me with your report, it's like, hey, let's get on the call with Kevin yeah. because like legally under my life, I could lose my license if I gave, um, you know, that, that, that gets into the, the murky yeah, waters of providing yeah. legal advice, you know? Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, speaking of that, speaking of title, I wanted to talk about liens because yeah. um, I think that there's like some misconceptions about property liens and yeah. how you can uh, really resolve them because a lien isn't, I don't think the end of the world. And, yeah. you know, like you said, so could you talk to us a little bit more about property liens and maybe yeah. how you help buyers resolve them? Again, there's different kinds. If we're talking about, let's focus on, let's say municipal county liens, let's say for violations of not having the property up to code or, mm -hmm. or, or, I'll give you an example of a client. I have a client in Miami Shores who just bought this property that has about a million dollars in liens. They bought it, but it's, it's a great deal. But you know Miami Shores has a very strict code how to yeah, keep the your grass, grass laying. Yep. exterior. Um, as soon as you are not in compliance, there will be a code officer that'll take, put a ticket. A lot of people don't know that these little tickets that are $10, $15 or one citation accrue and accrue over the years. The violations that I'm dealing with are a million dollars, not because the fine is a million dollars, but because they've been set in place since 2011 and they've been accruing. So accruing interest and accruing uh -huh. a, a fees. So that's one thing. I think when you talk about liens, I think you should be aware that a lot of these liens will be accruing interest and will be accruing fees. So that's something that if you get one, I would say try to resolve it right away. Do not let it, let it be because it can become a million dollars like this client. I think when resolutions come, it's just a matter, for example, for, for this property in Miami Shores, my client, I'm helping them resolve some of these liens. And we're, we're focusing on not just remediating the property to address those liens. Um, first steps first, we, we, what I tend to do is reach out directly to code compliance and try to find the officer who put those or the officer in charge. I just pick up the phone and I try to establish conversations. I find that very useful because you'd be surprised at how many times just picking up the phone and having a conversation is easier than sending an email with 50 attachments and, and five paragraphs. So I think hiring an attorney that, that has a good, is personable, has good connections in the city, that's key for resolving liens. As far as the process, in this case, for example, we have to go in front of the city council to appeal basically these liens. But in order to resolve those, you have to address those, you have to petition, and hopefully they reduce it. It's not even a guarantee because they can yeah. be stuck with those million dollars. But but fortunately, my client is not just remediating the property, they're remodeling. So I think we have a good chance. But yeah, when it comes to liens, I would say just be aware that these things accrue. Don't let them just sit there. Lien resolution is not that bad. I think you just have to have an attorney that knows who to speak to, has good connections with, with the local cities. It's all about connections. I think it's all about, you know, being able to talk to someone and every municipality, every county is different. You know, dealing here in, in Miami-Dade County with, with local cities and municipalities has been completely different for me than dealing, say, in Hillsborough or Pinellas County where we have our other office, that they're, they're much stricter. It's funny because I have to have two different really? approaches. Yeah, I have to have two different approaches here. My approach is always phone doing that and it's funny in Hillsborough and Pinellas my approach is very like 
here's my little paragraph with that. And then after the fact, maybe I'll speak. They, they do not want to talk to you. They don't care. They're very like strict. So I just think picking, picking an attorney, a good local attorney, someone that knows the municipality, someone that has experience. If you're looking to resolve liens, it's super important to pick the proper attorney that is really actually going to go and, and, and get this done, has the personality to get this done because you don't want a combative person that's going to go in there and yell because like I said, some of these liens, it's what you owe and you can petition, you can remodel the whole house. And if the city council, you know, you go in there and you're, you're being combative and problematic, they're just going to leave it for you. So I think it's really key to have a good attorney, someone to bat on your, on your end. And it may not even be an attorney. There's people, there's specific companies that dedicate themselves to lien resolution. So like I always say prop logics, that's one of our vendors that we use for like our reports and things. Yeah. Like they have a division that dedicates themselves to lien resolutions. You don't necessarily may need an attorney. It's just getting a good vendor. And, and like I said, I feel like I'm plugging for prop logics, but they're, they're <laughs> excellent. They're statewide. They're really well known. They're really well connected. They know the system. They know what you need to do, the process. So I think, I think that's key. Either a good attorney or having a good vendor that actually knows how to do this established. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that's big here. I mean, just the amount of flippers and the amount of yeah. investors who, you know, buy a property cash and they take it as is and they're okay with the liens because, you know, they, they cash, know if yeah. they can negotiate yeah. it down or if they can yeah. work something out with the city. Yeah. Have you found, this is a, a side, um, have you found in your experience is the city um, maybe more likely to come to an agreement or to settle liens if yeah. the property is in maybe like a bad condition and yeah. uh, the buyer is going to renovate and just make the curb appeal nicer. Have you found that in your experience? Absolutely. So like to the example of Miami Shores, these clients, the property has been in foreclosure, has been dilapidated for about eight years. So that's actually the first approach I took to them. I told them before we even approach, I yeah. need architectural plans and I need your, your plan of action so that I can organize and then go to the code compliance officer and explain. So having a good plan of action, not just saying, hey, remove this. And I think it's also, it makes a difference whether the person petitioning for the lien reduction is actually still a property owner who incurred the original lien, or it's someone who has taken on a property that has a prior lien from a prior owner. So th it. I think those two things uh, make a difference for when people are evaluating these reduction, petitions for reductions. I, I don't think that they're gonna be much very favorable to someone who's had this lien for eight years and all of a sudden woke up and is saying, hey, I want to fix this versus, you know, someone who just bought this property and that is actually in the process. So that's very key. I mean, I, I wouldn't say don't do it, but if you're an owner that has had a lien for 10 years and now you want to try to resolve it and you're dealing with like the city of Coral Gables yeah. or the city of Miami Shores, I would say good luck because like they're going to look at you and they'll be like, what have you been doing? So before you waste your money, I think it's, it's, it does make a huge difference, you know, and and obviously, yeah, if you, we were saying flippers, that's very common here. You know, you buy a property, you, you find yourself expired permits, you know, open permits, lien violation, things like that, like this client and, and it's a gamble. So again, it goes back to what I said, not just having proper due diligence. I think, I think a lot of people here sometimes get in the, in the game of, of buying and so desperate that you don't do your proper due diligence. I think that's why even as you, as, as a real estate agent, and you may not know this, you can do your own lien searches. You know, it's not an exclusive title like service that we use. And that's something that a buyer can use as well. PropLogix is an open vendor that anybody can call and say, I'm interested in this property. Can you pull a lien report for me? You know, before you, you get in there, because you're right. A lot of people go into as is contracts and, yep. you know, you don't realize what a headache you're getting into. So. I just think it comes down to, to due diligence. And, and if you do get a property that has that, having a plan of action, you know, having a good plan of action, having a good either attorney or a good vendor that's going to go back for you and petition this, you know, before you actually sign off on the contract, which is what my clients did before they signed off. Yeah. We had multiple meetings. We had an architect. We had an engineer. Like we had a structural engineer go to the place, you know, evaluate. We did a thorough, I did a thorough review of the liens and everything that was in there you know, determine their, listen, this is, this is your chances, this is your possibilities. Then based on that is where they actually decided to, you know, pull the trigger, get into contract and close. Awesome. Yeah. yeah just giving them like best case, worst case scenario yeah. and doing all that, that due diligence yeah, up front. 
Well, speaking of that, you know, speaking of having somebody like you, I, I know people, you know, they, they have a friend who's an attorney or their yeah. dad's yeah. brother or, you know, family, yeah. fa oh, there's always a family friend who's an yeah. attorney. And, you know, I, I always say, you know, it's great to get a second opinion. So yeah. what are some things that people should look for when they're looking to hire a real estate attorney? I think experience definitely experience this this industry what we do in real estate law again it, it's not rocket science but there's a lot of moving parts it's a lot of little little things that that if you don't do something right it'll derail something completely so i think experience matters and and with experience comes knowledge of all those moving parts so mm -hmm. someone that can see the big picture has the experience to overview the entire transaction you know that's really integral. I really think just word of mouth, reputation, you never know. Community, my, our community here is really small and surprisingly, like we, we, have, we live in a big city, but our community precedes us and you start to see and you can ask around and you will find out, you know? So, so I, think, I think just experience, ask around, reputation matters. I really wouldn't say pricing because pricing, I wouldn't go with, with pricing alone. It is impactful, but I think more importantly, it is the experience having having proper vetting of, of individuals and in reality i would say there really isn't a difference between say going with like a boutique firm like myself or like a larger firm you're going to get the same service if you have the same kind of attorney so so a lot of people may think oh i'm going to go with like a greenberg troy or greenspoon martyr where i used to be and that's somehow going to be like you know like better not necessarily because you know it may you will never speak to the attorney. You're going to be speaking to their paralegal. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So I think I think something. I think that's that brings up maybe maybe a good point is access. You know, as a buyer, don't you want to have access to to someone? So something that that I pride myself on is giving access. Like I give access to my agents. Like you guys know, you have my personal number. You can text me. Um, and, and my buyers as well, not a lot of my buyers have my personal number, but they have, they have access, you know? So I think access, uh, reputation, and just, you know, experience, I think those are the biggest things. And out of those three, I would say, obviously experience and reputation, but access is the biggest thing because home buying is a, is a scary thought, you know? It's a lot of money, it's, it's a scary thought. You have a lot of time first home buyers that have questions that, you know, attorneys, and some attorneys may think that they're above answering that, yeah. And, and I don't think, I don't think you should ever be above answering that. Like I, no matter how silly the question may seem, it, it may seem something critical for someone who's buying a home for the first time. So giving that access to a client sets them at ease. And, and I, I tend to over communicate rather than under. So I try, I am constantly writing emails, like calling, checking in to the point that some home buyers are like, I got it. Like, like <laughs> got it. Yeah. But yeah. But giving that access sets a lot of people at ease, sets a lot of agents at ease. It, it makes you sleep better, you know, knowing that, that there's someone thinking about the deal the same way that you're thinking about the deal. So that, that's super important. Make sure you get someone who gives you that access. And, and again, not knocking my paralegals because without them, we wouldn't be here. But you sometimes want to talk to the attorney. You sometimes want to talk to the person who, who know you hired to, to, yep. do, to do your transaction. So it's important to not just have that access, but to, to find someone who's going to give you that access in time. Yeah, because people think, you know, I'm going to go with that big name law firm, but it's like, you're not going to get the partner, yeah. or you're not going to get, you know, the, yeah. you know, the associate, like you're going to yeah. get the paralegal as the first line yeah. of defense. Yeah. And then if you want to talk to the partner, like that's a, that's a billable hour, you know, that's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, I don't bill by the hour. For, well, we, we tend to, Attorneys don't tend to bill by the hour for real estate transactions, residential, uh -huh. you know, it's mostly flat rates. Very rarely do you find that you do billable hours. I, that would say that there must be some kind of extensive legal work involved that you have signed a retainer or done something uh, for you to be billing by the hours. But, but fortunately, most of these transactions are all flat rates, but yeah, but yeah you're right. Like if you get into a legal something, good luck talking to a partner and then <laughs> wait for the bill. Yes. <laughs> and the retainer. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we're, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Well, this has been so much fun. Uh, we talked a lot about real estate transaction, legal stuff, changing gears. Kevin, where can we find you when you're outside the law firm? What do you like to do in Miami? <laughs> <laughs> what activities gardening. are you in? Gardening. <laughs> oh yeah. I've gotten into gardening a lot with, with COVID. Um, it's, I know I don't look like I'm someone who goes in gardens, but I garden a lot. Like when I'm not doing this, you know, it's funny to, to kind of disconnect 
because mm-hmm. my mind is always on. I'm, I'm the kind of person that, that I worry about my clients. I worry about, you know, you, you are not just someone that I work with, but you're a friend, you know, like you become family friends. And, and, and so I worry a lot. And I think gardening has allowed me to kind of disconnect. I, I just throw my AirPods on, yeah. put some good beats. And I literally start either clipping the hedges or doing something here in the yard, which I did last night. I, I have a very busy week. So last night at like 6.30 when the day wrapped up, I just put my yeah. headphones on. I went outside and was doing some, some gardening, some, some landscaping here in the house. But yeah, I, I've, I've really gotten into it. It's really relaxing, actually. <laughs> I agree. I, I think yeah. it's a great way to, yeah. to disconnect. Yeah. I'm very proud of my grass. I have the greenest grass in the, in the block. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, that's so fun. And for everybody watching, it's so funny. Kevin, you live right around the block from my buyers that are under contract right yes. now? Yes. Yes. They're buying two blocks from here. That's yeah. crazy. What a small world, right? I know. I know. I saw that price for that house. So good comparable. <laughs> great for your property value. And great, great for, for my them. property value. Yeah. 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 Win win for everyone. Yeah. I know. I love that. <laughs> awesome, Kevin. Well, uh, we're, we're nearing the end. Any final thoughts you want to leave people with? Yeah, I would say, you know, as, as buyers, like you're a buyer's agent most of the time, right? So yeah. You know, as, as buyers, we're, we're getting a lot of people here in Florida, a, a lot of new people. So to these buyers, I would just say to kind of recap, you know, find someone who's really going to go be in your corner. This is an experience. And I think having a good team, building a good team around you to to buy your, your dream home is, is essential. So I think that team consists of not just having your good realtor, but in reality, a good attorney, you know, and, and that's the truth. Having having a good team makes the load of difference, getting you the best deal and, you know, just basically guiding you because by the time the process is done, you become family, you become really intimate, you know, you're talking every day. So just yeah. finding someone that you're really comfortable with, you know, someone that you can really like, like have access to and, and really trust to guide you through this deal. Because, because again, it's very scary. It's a lot of money. So you want to make sure that you have a good team. I would just say that as a buyer, always be conscious of building that good team that, exactly. that can really support you through this process. Yep. Inspector, attorney, yeah. lender, if you need an oh, appraisal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't even think of totally <laughs> left out the Monday. I'm thinking cash deals, cash. Yeah. Deals. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's important. Yeah. If you're a lender, having a good lender, that is almost as important as, as the attorney, the lender makes magic happen. So, you know, and, and, and then we, you and I have seen a lot of deals go south because of lending. So <laughs> we yep. get up to the finish line the day before closing and things just fall apart. So surprise. <laughs> yeah, surprise. So I think doing your due diligence on, 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 on the attorney and just the lender as well. And it's the same things applies, you know, access, reputation, having someone who's really going to be there to explain things for you and knows all these moving parts because lending the same like law is not rocket science, but there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of pieces that if you don't set them in and they more, more than us, I think that they have a harder task that if they don't do something properly, you know, you know, can delay the whole process because if they're, they have a whole underwriting team that they need to answer to. So, so it's very, very important that you find, find a good lender and have that good team. So yeah, definitely part of that team. Definitely. Kevin, thanks so much. Where can everybody find you? Today in my, in my home office, <laughs> <laughs> my, my office is uh, located in Coral Gables. We're at 1805 uh, Ponce de Leon. Uh, nice. We also have an office in Tampa and in, uh, in St. Petersburg area. Okay. But yeah. You can normally find me here in Miami, Florida. Um, if you need to reach out, you can always share You can share my, my contact information, but my office is here in Coral Gables. Awesome. Yeah, I'm going to link all your contact information yeah. in the show description below so people can reach out to you. Oh, Kevin, is, thank you, you so much. You haven't been to my office. I, <laughs> you haven't visited. See, this virtual signing, all this high tech stuff. Like, I know. I mean, you've never even been to one of my I know. office. <laughs> That's so, we've, we've never closed yeah, in person. You've never, you've never been. Let's see if the closing this week. Yeah, which I'm never mind because they're, they're signing out of state. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't that the best? I mean, seriously, I you, it's the best. I haven't seen, I haven't, I've had, we're in, we're in July of this year. I've had two in-person closings. And this yeah. year out of, out of like around 250 like loan closings that we've had. Yeah. Three have decided to come into the office. Wow. Everyone else, as soon as I tell them I can send you someone on a mobile notary, they're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Say yeah. less. So yeah, say less. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but one day you'll come by. <laughs> one day. Yeah, I'll yeah. definitely have to stop by. Kevin, yeah. thank you so much again. Oh, Appreciate pleasure. your time. Yeah. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate it.